Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Joseph Cooper. I'm joined by my colleague, Julia Conson. Uh, we're here from Cystics Canada, and we're here to talk to you about the linkable open data environment. Um, so without uh, further ado, let's jump right into it. So for some context, uh, StatCan is a regular producer of open data, but mainly aggregate open data. So for example, different uh, statistical measures or indices released at the national or provincial or maybe the uh, level of the CSD or CMA. Um, but there's an increased demand for more granular data. It turns out there's a wealth of open microdata uh, available to many cities and provinces across Canada on a variety of themes on the internet that anyone can download and use. Um, this is great for us because StatCan does have quite a bit of uh, internal microdata, but you know, as much of our data comes from things like surveys, well, we're not at liberty to release it. Um, but the open data that exists online will, of course, can be used by anyone. Um, some of this data is complementary to StatCan's internal data holdings, um, and some can be and has been used to fill existing data gaps. So what I mean by this is, let's say that I were to download from a municipality's open data portal a business register or business listings. Well, StatCan has extensive data on businesses in Canada, and these can be used to compare and augment one, each, one, each, one another. Um, on the other hand, some data that can be collected really doesn't have internal analogs in StatCan. Um, so a good example of this is data on basic healthcare infrastructure, like locations of hospitals and long-term care homes. Um, StatCan didn't have this data until we put together an open database of healthcare facilities using the open data available online. So this brings us to the linkable open data environment, or the LOAD. Um, so this is a project that's been going on for a few years now. Um, it has four main pillars, the first of which is open micro databases released under the Canada Open Government License. So essentially we collect and clean and standardize um, open data uh, from across Canada into a single coherent database and release it so that anyone can use it um, under a very permissive license. Um, we try to use open tools as much as possible. So for example, things like QGIS instead of ArcGIS um, and softwares like Python and R. Um, we also work uh, with a lot of our scripts and processing scripts on GitHub so anyone can see them and use them. Uh, collaboration, the great thing about working with open data is it enables collaboration, much easier to share uh, open data. And finally, uh, we have an interactive web map, the load viewer, where we can visualize some of these data sets we put together. Julia is going to be going into more uh, detail there and showing off a demo a little later. So these are the databases we've released so far and the ones that we have yet to release. Um, so, so far we've released an open database of healthcare facilities, educational facilities, cultural facilities, buildings and addresses. Um, coming up um, this year and possibly next year are the open databases of businesses, recreational support facilities, and infrastructure. We have a bit of a timeline here. Uh, so we started this project in 2018 with the open database of buildings. Um, we followed this up in 2019 with an update to the open database of buildings, as well as the open database of educational facilities. Uh, in 2020, um, we released an open database of healthcare facilities. This was put together very quickly uh, in the face of the COVID pandemic. Uh, when we discovered that you know people were missing just that kind of basic information about where are all the hospitals and long-term care homes and clinics in Canada. Um, and we quickly put together an update to this where we were able to enhance it, uh, update some sources, do enhanced deduplication and things of that nature. Um, also in 2020, we um, developed the open database of cultural learning facilities. Uh, in 2021, we released an update to our open database of educational facilities and the first version of an open database of addresses. Um, finally, uh, we are working now on open database of businesses, recreational support facilities, which we'll be releasing soon, and infrastructure. Um, so we can talk about each of these databases in a little bit of detail. Um, so the open database of building footprints, or of buildings, I should say, contains building footprints. So really, um, if you're familiar with building footprints, you know, if you don't, they're essentially just a top-down view or the outline of buildings um, and where they are in space geographically. Um, so the data contained here is very simple. It's the geometry of the building. Um, we include the centroids. Um, we include the CSD or the municipality uh, that it happened to fall in, the providers, so we can give attribution, um, and then a few basic um, things you can compute from the geometry, such as the area and perimeter. Um, so this is really just basic information. It doesn't tell you what the building is, just that there is a building there. Uh, and again, this is version two. Um, which has 65 different sources, which we've compiled, standardized into a single data set. Um, we also have an open database of addresses you know, on the subject of kind of the basic geographic information. Um, so this was released fairly recently in April of 2021. And this includes 99 different government open data sets, primarily municipalities, but also provinces. Um, and the total is over 10 million addresses. 
Um, again, this is basic address information, so street number, street name, uh, units if available, postal code if available, um, city, uh, census subdivision, um, provider, and the geocoordinates, because of course the whole point of this data set is to know what are the geocoordinates, where are all the addresses in Canada, or as many of them as we can find. Um, and again, uh, this comes with metadata that tells you, you know, who were the different sources we used and gives all the proper attributions. Oops. Um, we have the Open Database of Educational Facilities, which is a list of schools across Canada. Um, version 2 was released in April of 2021. This was funded by CERNAC, uh, Canadian in, or Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs Canada. Um, so I should say we're a cost recovery division primarily. Most of the work we do um, is funded through projects we do for external clients. In this case, we had a request for determining where are the schools in Canada. Um, and we were able to you know, answer that question using primarily open data and also publicly available data um, and put that together into a single kind of coherent data set for anyone to use, which is very nice. Um, our current version has over 19,000 facilities. This spans from uh, pre-kindergarten, where it's available in the original sources, kindergarten, um, elementary school, high school, and postgraduate, or I should say graduate school. Um, so colleges, universities, trade schools, and so on. Um, the information available in this will be school name, the address, um, I said classification, which is the international standard classification of education level. This is a way for us to take grade ranges and map them to a single standard. Um, so for instance, while one data set might have, for instance, the word elementary or high school, um, another data set might say K to 12 um, or K to six. And if you would like to be able to compare these, um, in a sensible way, it's nice to have everything mapped to the same standards. So for that, we used international standard classification of education. Um, latitude and longitude, where it's available. Um, we try to do some geocoding where we can to fill in some gaps. Um, and uh, again, this is released under the Open Government of Canada license for anyone to use. Uh, the Open Database of Healthcare Facilities, um, version 1.1 was released in August of 2020, um, just a few months after the original release in April of 2020. Um, we use government sources and also CAIHI, um, Canadian Institute of Health Information, uh, shared some data with us so we could put together a list of hospitals, residential care facilities, and ambulatory care facilities that think things like clinics. And we have about 7,000 facilities in this data set. Um, so again, basic information, just the name of the facility, uh, type, which again, we map to one of either ambulatory care services, hospitals, or nursing and residential care, um, the address, the latitude and longitude where it's available, um, or if we were able to geocode it, um, what sense of subdivision, the data provider, again, to give um, attribution and so that users can go back to the original source if necessary. Um, again, released under the Open Government of Canada license. The Cultural Learning Facilities data set, um, this version one was released in October of 2020. This had 170 government sources um, and has over 7,000 records, and this includes things like museums, galleries, libraries, and so on. Um, I should say this is actually um, an interesting challenge because unlike something like educational facilities, where it's somewhat easy to standardize things because an international standard exists for grade ranges, there's not really a standard definition of what would be considered in a database such as this. Um, so this was something that the analysts working on this had to um, sort of decide from context and from looking at what's generally available from municipalities. Um, but we've been uh, heartened to, you know, after talking to people who work um, in kind of the art culture industry who found our data set useful and said, you know, that we had sensible classifications, which is a nice thing to hear. Um, but again, this contains um, basic information, the names of the facilities, the types, um, both an original type and the standardized type, uh, address, latitude and longitude, sense of subdivision, um, and so on. So I'll just quickly speak about the general process for putting these together. So first we need to identify all the data sets we want to include. Um, this is unfortunately largely a manual process of visiting all the different open data portals in Canada that we're aware of, um, depending on the data set, of course. For some, such as educational facilities or healthcare facilities, odds are good that it's provincially mandated or that there are provincial lists, in which case it isn't necessary to visit every municipality. For something like an open database of cultural and art facilities or sport and recreational facilities, um, it does become necessary, or addresses, it does become necessary to see what's available from the municipalities, in which case you'll have many more sources. Um, in some cases, maybe there's some pre-processing that needs to be done. So if most of our data sets are, for example, CSV files or Excel files, but some are shape files, then we'll need to convert those shape files um, so that they can be processed by our software. Um, speaking of our software, 
Um, we have a standardization tool called Open Tabulate, which was developed by a previous member of our team. It's actually a Python package that can be used to take um, an input CSV file and an input JSON file that has a data dictionary map in it, essentially says, this is what the original data columns are, and this is what the output desired data columns are, and we'll do that transformation. Um, so this is something we use. It's not the only thing we use. So for example, for the open database of addresses, we had a slightly different process in pipeline that was actually built off of work done by the not-for-profit open addresses. But the general process is the same. Uh, by identifying data sets, uh, applying a standardization procedure to make sure that the data columns um, align to our new data columns, um, doing some processing, such as address parsing, removing duplicates. Uh, this is very important when you have many sources. You can imagine, for example, I might be collecting data from municipality, as well as a county the municipality is in, as well as a province that the county is in, and I might have a single facility repeated three or four times, um, and it's very important to be able to identify these. Um, so we have some deduplication processes and some geocoding, um, so we can attempt to um, fill in some of these missing coordinates when we're able to. Um, after all this, we produce a consolidated data set, um, which we can release and upload to the load viewer. Um, with this, I will pass it off to Julia. Thanks, Joseph. So for the interactive uh, web map, we have depended on the open source Mapbox technology, and we created this way for users to be able to explore the georeference load data sets. So those that have latitude and longitude coordinates as points, as well as the building footprints as a polygon geometry. We use the open source map technology because we were able to create a customized interactive map uh, that allows to meet accessibility requirements as well. Aside from just showing the open database of buildings version two, which has about 4.4 million uh, building footprints, we also decide to merge with it the open street map building footprints, as well as a partnership we have with Microsoft that released uh, millions of building footprints through uh, AI technology and their big satellite imagery. How we went forth with doing this is we assume administrative data collected from the load open database of building footprints were uh, assumed to be the most accurate and reliable. And then areas that were not overlapped with the ODB, we then uh, added the OSM data and then anywhere else that was empty and had Microsoft building footprint data we included as well. And this created a uh, data set of approximately 13 million building footprints that we have visualized on the interactive web map. So with that, I'll go and I'll actually give you a little demo of the interactive map. So uh, as you see, we can we have an initial view of the national coverage. You're, you can pan into the map by zooming in and you can scroll as well. And it gives you an overview of the number of data uh, that exists within the provinces. Currently we have the open database of healthcare facilities visualized with pink representing hospitals, blue nursing and residential care facilities and yellow ambulatory healthcare services. We can also search in the box here if you have a specific uh, municipality or census subdivision of interest, and it will pan and zoom you right to that location. As you start zooming in even closer, what you'll start to see is all the building footprints that we merge together. And the pink represents the load open database buildings, the yellow are the Microsoft, and the blue are the open street map. As you click on one of the facility locations, you're also provided with the other variables collected as Joseph detailed prior. We have the option of changing the different databases as well. We have the culture and art facilities and educational facilities as well. And when you select it, it pretty automatically uh, presents to you the other data as well, and you can explore it further. Just going back here. So as men jo mentioned by Joseph, we also have several different of our projects or scripts and the, the code for the web map available on GitHub as well. Open Tableau is one of our more popular and widely used scripts for most of our uh, databases, but we also have the COAP or the Canadian Open Address Processing script that's specific for the open database of addresses that was uh, in partnership with the open addresses community. 
We also have a script for the integrated Canadian building footprints that was the merging of the ODB, Microsoft and Opus OSM data that's available for other people to generate the data set. We wanted to also make sure that uh, others can create interactive web maps like the one we have for the load project. And so we've created a generalized web mapping component repository for others to work off of as well. And as mentioned by Joseph uh, throughout the presentation, we have a lot of partnerships with various different organizations, including municipalities, uh, companies, um, and as well as colleges and universities through capstone projects. Uh, one notable one was Microsoft saw our effort through the open database of buildings, uh, compiling all that, and they took that data and used it to uh, for training and were able to create uh, 11.8 million building footprints through using their Bing satellite imagery and deep learning convolutional neural network uh, modeling. We were then able to use that data space, as mentioned, to then create that merged database within the Linkable open data environment. As mentioned also by Joseph, we have the upcoming open database of sport and recreational facilities that will be released in the coming months. Furthermore, we'll be having the business and infrastructure uh, databases released within this year and, in the, in, um, and more to come in the future. And we're always open for ideas and recommendations. And if there's any that are of interest, we're happy to uh, receive feedback and ideas and we can certainly think about collaborating with you. Thank you very much and feel free to contact us uh, to learn more about the project or have access to some of our uh, existing projects and work. Thank you.